Hello AP Stat students, Mr. Hazelhorst here with your Chapter 12 introduction video. Today we're going to talk about significance tests in practice, and so I want you to keep in mind the things that we learned in Chapter 11, and uh, we'll just introduce you to some basics involving how we would actually work significance tests involving means and proportions. So the first thing that I want to remind you is, again, we've just learned about significance tests in Chapter 11. And so pretty much everything that we covered in Chapter 11 is going to carry over and apply here in Chapter 12. Uh, we're going to see the same steps to our, in our inference toolbox, statistical significance, and that idea will apply, cautions, type 1 and type 2 errors, and thinking about the consequences that uh, would go along with those types of errors in the context of a problem, power. All of that information that we covered from Chapter 11 will still apply here in Chapter 12. The only thing that will not carry over is the z-test. As we begin to work significance tests in practice, we can't use the z-test because, again, it requires that we know the population standard deviation, which in practice, if we knew anything about a population, there'd be no purpose for us to really apply statistics um, because we'd know what we were trying to find. So again, the reality of it is that we're not going to know that population standard deviation. So we want to introduce today uh, how we work with means when we're, um, when we're not given that population standard deviation. So real quickly here, I just want to remind you of the inference toolbox, same thing that we used again here in Chapter 11. Uh, first step, as always, we're going to define our parameters, and so we'll be looking again at null and alternative hypotheses. What's going to change here in Chapter 11 is that we may be defining mu or p. Most of the problems that we dealt with in Chapter 11 were all involving the mean, uh, but we will throw proportions back into play here. Uh, our conditions, which again, remember at this point, uh, there's no reason for us to miss our conditions. We've done this enough uh, in Chapters 9, 10, and 11 uh, that I don't want to see you miss any more condition um, steps as we're working through problems, be it on a quiz or a test. All right. So again, for a mean, we'll either be applying the central limit theorem or we're going to check our graphs. Remember, it's not enough to say check graphs, but we want to explain the details of what we actually need to see within those graphs. And then for a proportion, we're going to bring back the condition that n times p and n times 1 minus p both need to be greater than or equal to 10. And we'll have our calculations and our interpret step. And so what I want to do next here is just break down some of the changes that we're going to see specifically within the inference toolbox uh, for each type of parameter, whether we're dealing with a mean or a proportion. And so let's start off with our mean here. Uh, the first change uh, really isn't going to occur until our calculation step. What we're going to change here is instead of working with a z-test, we're going to work with a t-test. We're going to base things on a t-distribution just like we did in, uh, excuse me, uh, in chapter 10 as we work with confidence intervals. Because again, since we don't know the population standard deviation, what we're going to have to work with instead is the sample standard deviation. We're going to apply s. All right. Now, one of the things that will be important is understanding how to use table B in our gold packet or our t-distribution, but I'm going to save that for our working class. It'll be easier to explain, uh, and I think easier for you to see there as opposed to through a video. Okay. Now, because we're changing from the z-test to the t-test, really the only thing that changes is the critical value. Instead of being a critical value of z, we're going to apply a critical value of t. But notice the formula is pretty much the exact same as what we used in Chapter 11. We're still going to take our statistic minus our hypothesized parameter value, and we'll divide that by the standard deviation of the statistic. The only thing that's changing again, we're changing sigma to s, and that's what we see here in the formula. Okay? And so we will again talk about a t-distribution with degrees of freedom. So remember from chapter 10 as well, our degrees of freedom will be determined by n minus 1. And that's really the only change that we see as we go from significance tests involving a mean with the z-test to a t-test. Uh, and so I think really it's going to be a pretty easy change. Again, if you are pretty solid on your concepts from chapter 11, that's going to make things really easy here as well. Okay? So next, let's talk a little bit about what's different involving a proportion. 
So with proportions, we have a couple of changes compared to what we did um, in chapter 11. First off, again, we have to be aware of our change in the, in the normality condition. All right, we're going to say n times p and n times 1 minus p. Now, when we check this condition back in chapter 10 with confidence intervals, we used p hat. But in this case, as we check our conditions, we're going to be using the hypothesized value. All right, so whatever you define in your null hypothesis, that's the value that we're going to use to check our conditions for normality. Uh, and so that's a little bit of a change from chapter 10 that we kind of want to keep in the back of our mind as we work with proportions and significance tests. Okay. Next change is when it comes to our calculations. Um, the technical name of the test is a, the one proportion Z test is what we're going to use with proportions. Um, but on your calculator, you're going to see it abbreviated as the one prop Z test. This is very similar again to what we did in chapter 10 with the one prop Z interval as we were dealing with proportions. But again, here we're running a significance test, so we're going to look at the test. All right. Now, the test statistic formula follows the exact same pattern that we saw in chapter 11 and even on our previous slide. So again, you're going to see the the statistic, the p hat, or sample proportion, minus our hypothesized proportion. All right, so p sub 0, this is just representing our value from our null hypothesis. So whatever is being claimed, that will be the p sub 0 value. Now, because we're assuming that that value is true, and we think about a normal distribution, we're saying, okay, if this value is true, p sub 0 all right, you're going to be in the center. And the shape of this normal distribution will be determined by a standard deviation also centered around this p sub 0 value. So notice how in our standard deviation formula, we're basing things on the null hypothesis. Now, this is different, again, than what we saw in Chapter 10 with confidence intervals. In Chapter 10 with confidence intervals, we used p hat in the standard deviation part of the formula. Uh, and so again, that's a little bit of a change and something that I want you to keep in the back of your mind. So basically, as we work both in conditions and in our calculation step, it's that null hypothesis value that's going to be important, okay? And this has a big impact on a concept that we talked about in Chapter 11 as well. So let's address that. Now, because our formulas for a confidence interval and a significance test are, are based on different standard deviations, all right? We no longer have duality with regards to the confidence intervals in a significance test. Now, this only involves proportions, all right? We still have duality with our t-test and means. Uh, we just don't have duality with proportions. And again, it boils down to the difference in the standard deviation formulas that we see here. Again, from confidence intervals, as I just mentioned on the previous slide, the standard deviation is based on p hat. But with a significance test, the standard deviation is based on the p value we use in our null hypothesis. And so it's this difference in the, in the standard deviation of the statistics that does not apply, allow us to apply the concept of duality. So it is actually possible that your confidence interval of a proportion can give you uh, or lead you to one conclusion and your significance test would lead you to a different conclusion. Now again, with means, if we do our work correctly, everything should match up because again, of the concept of duality. But duality does not apply with proportions, okay? So that's something that we need to keep in the back of our mind. And so don't be surprised if you run a confidence interval and a significance test involving the same sample data that we draw different conclusions um, within those two tests. Again, no duality in these concepts. Now, as always, I want to remind you to complete the response form um, in the, below the video here. Um, and, and as always, please make any comments if there's anything that... Uh, you know, you're maybe even struggling with from chapter 11 that you know is going to be carried over into chapter 12. That might be a good thing to make comment on in, uh, in the response form. That knows, that'll just let me know that I need to hit on that concept a little bit more here in chapter 12. All right. 
Now, we're just one week away from spring break, and chapter 12 being so much repetition from chapter 11, we're going to breeze through this chapter pretty quickly. So, just to make note that we won't have a quiz over this chapter, and our test will be coming up on Friday, March 7th. All right, we want to make sure that we get it done before spring break. Um, we don't want to have to come back and, and take our test after that. All right, if we do have any uh, weather related cancellations this week, just know that our test will still stay on the same date. We'll just squeeze things together within the week. But I don't anticipate any of those occurring. All right, so again, make a note of that. No quiz this chapter. Uh, test will be on Friday. And again, if you have any issues, even with anything from chapter 11 that you want re-clarified here in chapter 12, please make comment of that um, in the response form. All right, hope you guys have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Made with DoodleCast Pro.